I'm Valerie Bertinelli. You may know me from Valerie's Home Cooking or from Kids Baking Championship. And I am here to help you make the perfect stovetop mac and cheese. I mean, it's, it's perfect for so many ways besides tasting like unbelievably amazing and cheesy and delicious. But it's a perfect meal if you don't want to go to the grocery store. It's got all these kind of pantry staples in it. So if you want to cook along with me, I would like you to get some bubbling, boiling water on the stovetop. And then get some elbow macaroni. As soon as this water starts to boil, we're going to start the macaroni going while we get the sauce together. So it's got cornstarch, evaporated milk, unsalted butter, Colby Monterey Jack blend cheese, a little bit of Dijon mustard, and some hot sauce. If you don't like hot sauce, can I encourage you to please try just a little bit of it because it's really gonna round out the flavor. And if you do like hot sauce, add a little bit more in. That's fine too. While you get all that together, just press pause. I'll be here. When you unpause me, I'll still be here. Okay, go ahead. All right, we back. Is your water boiling? Because mine is. Salt it really, really well. You can watch it bubble up when you salt it. I love that part. <laughs> Let's throw in the pasta. 12 ounces of elbow macaroni. I want to give that a quick stir so nothing sticks to the bottom. So the box usually says about seven to eight minutes. I'm going to cook this to just under that and drain it, reserving some pasta water. That's what you want to do because that pasta water is going to help you thicken up the sauce along with this cornstarch slurry that we're going to make. Evaporated milk is one of those great ingredients that you can keep in your pantry, it can be used for so many things, especially if you've run out of fresh milk in your fridge. It's a great creamer for coffee. You can use it in pies, you can use it in all kinds of things. 60% of the water has been evaporated out of the milk, so it's a nice creamy milk. If you don't have fresh cream, you got evaporated milk always in your pantry. But first, let's get the cornstarch in here. One teaspoon. The cornstarch is for thickening. That's gonna thicken up your mac and cheese. But I'm gonna add a little flavor to it. A little bit of hot sauce or less. This isn't really gonna heat up your mac and cheese. It's just gonna give it some flavor. If you really wanna heat it up, you can add more hot sauce. A Little bit of mustard. If you have a whisk, go get a whisk. This is gonna help you break down the cornstarch. And then you're gonna take a little bit of this evaporated milk, just a spoon at a time. You really wanna get all the cornstarch mixed into the evaporated milk. This is looking good so far. I'm gonna add another spoon. This is the only super duper important step to make sure the cornstarch doesn't stick to the bottom and really gets blended evenly so it can thicken up the sauce. See how there's some sticking to the edges? Just get it up. Just making sure there's no bits down there. And then we can start to blend in the rest. So that's really the only thing I really want you to keep an eye on, is making sure that that cornstarch is mixed all the way in before you throw in the rest of the evaporated milk. Can you do that for me? Yes, please. Look good? All right, let's move on. Because we're gonna need some cheese for this mac and cheese. Okay, I have some Colby Jack blend. It's cheesy. I, I like using the brick because it's First of all, less expensive than the pre-shredded cheese. And the pre-shredded the, <laughs> the pre-shredded cheese, they've got some extra stuff in there that you really don't need. It takes a little bit longer to melt. This puppy is gonna melt super duper fast. Back in the good old days when I was a kid, back in 1860, right um, before the Civil War, <laughs> my mom gave me this job. Or my dad had this job. I like to cut it in half just so it's a little bit easier to handle. And then I use my grater as my measurement. So I'm gonna fill this all the way up. And this whole brick is basically about two cups. Somebody was super duper smart when they blended Colby and Jack together because Colby's got all that flavor. That is the orange part of the cheese. And the white part, Jack, is a super duper great melting cheese. So by putting these two together, Somebody out there is a genius. I don't want to thank you. Now, if you can't find Colby and Jack together, you can just get a little brick of Colby and a little brick of Jack and same thing, but this makes your life easy. Can you see how this is just slowly filling up? So this is 
one of the first pasta dishes that I introduced Wolfie to as a little one. Who doesn't like mac and cheese? I mean, seriously, it's unbelievable. And the great thing about mac and cheese is you can hide veggies and they'll never know it. The easiest thing to hide in mac and cheese is cauliflower. A little bit more challenging is the broccoli, but I learned early on that if I introduced broccoli to Wolfie early, he would eat it, and he did. As you can see, some of the cheese falls apart as I'm grating it. Probably the same thing happens to you. Don't get rid of all that. This is all gonna go in there too. Melty, melty in the mac and cheese. Oh, and speaking of melty, melty, the pasta is done. I am going to turn it off. Before you drain it, you guys, grab a coffee cup or anything that will hold some pasta water. You wanna pull some of the pasta water out. Pasta water has been salted, has all the starch from the pasta flavoring this water, and I'm gonna use it for my sauce. All right, let's drain it, okay? I've got a colander. I'm gonna get it in the sink. Then it's gonna go right back into that hot pot. Please, 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 I beg of you. This is me begging of you, do not rinse the pasta. All that beautiful starch needs to stay on the pasta for the mac and cheese to get nice and creamy. So there you go. But I don't wanna put the cheese in yet. Let's cream it up with some butter. About four tablespoons, that's half a stick. This has been softened so it should melt pretty quickly into the pasta. So this little bit of butter is doing a little bit of double duty. It's helping the pasta not stick. So if you don't want your pasta to stick, I know a lot of people will rinse their pasta. Don't do that. Put some butter in. You can already smell the creaminess and the lusciousness of the butter. It's giving it some more flavor. And it is the base of your sauce. Turn your heat back on to just a medium because now we're gonna cook the slurry into the pasta. Grab your slurry that you made earlier and get it right in. Get all the good stuff in there. Now I just want to bring this up to a nice boil. Oh, it's already smelling so good and there's not even cheese in here yet. You guys, I just, what I want for you is to have the perfect stovetop mac and cheese recipe right in your back pocket. Anytime you want to make mac and cheese weeknight, Sunday night dinner, you got it. You're going to get so good at this, you won't even need to read my recipe. This is nice and heated up. See, the reason we want to bring this back up to a nice boil is get that cornstarch cooked in. And then, oh yes, I can smell a little bit of the hot sauce. All the flavors are starting to just come up. It's a beautiful aroma. You guys, can you, can you smell it? Can you smell how good yours smells right now? This is nice and hot. So now it's time to add that cheese. Just hold this over, look. You can bring it all the way over. And boom, it goes right in. I'm gonna grab the rest off the board. You wanna take it off the heat so nothing burns, and then we're gonna add in a little bit of the pasta water. About a half a cup at first. See how it all melts down. If you need more, just put a little bit more in. Can you see how it's already starting to melt and get cheesy and gooey? Oh boy, this looks so yummy. Can you see that? <laughs> that is amazing. And as it sits here, it's just gonna get thicker and thicker. Wow, wow, wow. I say it's time to try a bite of this. Let's get this in here. That is the sound of a good mac and cheese. I love that sound. I swear to God that brings me back to my childhood when my mom would make mac and cheese and it's that that sensory kind of like, as you can hear it, my mouth is starting to water. Look at how beautiful that is. And it was so easy. Let's taste it.
This looks so yummy. This just looks, smells, feels so old fashioned. Oh boy. Oh. Mmm. It truly is the world's best comfort food. And it can be made in less than 20 minutes. Kind of amazing. But as good as it is, just like this, I'll show you a few tricks. If you wanna add in any extra flavors, look at this. Some cauliflower rice. This has already been cooked. It just will melt right into this, watch this. And the great thing about cauliflower rice, it has so much vitamin C in it. You're gonna be giving your kids vitamin C and they're not even gonna realize it. Get this all melted in. They'll never see it. I mean, sometimes we have to do that with our children, just hide a little veggie here and there. Mmm, it even adds more texture because then the cheese covers up all of the cauliflower. So you can use cauliflower rice or you can add in frozen spinach and that could go in. Or what about some butternut squash? Tons of vitamin A, fiber, really good. Broccoli, always, always good. It's got fiber, it's got potassium. It's super duper good for you. That will go great. And this is a good way if someone isn't real sure about broccoli, cover it with mac and cheese. I mean, how could you not love it? And then just for some decadence, I mean, why not some pancetta? Get that in there too. You wanna use bacon? Go for it, use bacon. You can put almost anything in a really great mac and cheese. And now you have a really great mac and cheese recipe.